renting a car in Europe and drive through sunsets, forests with trees that change colors, in a car packed with your family, or just by yourself. Well, then you need to know how to properly rent cars in Europe, especially if you are a foreigner like me from the US. These are the car rental companies that I found in Europe, but I have used Budget, Avis, and 60 in Italy and Spain. Okay, to the important bits. Things you need to carry to legally drive in Europe. These are the four things that you need to carry with you while you're driving in Europe. A valid passport from your country of origin. Your valid driver's license. A valid international driving permit issued from your country of origin. And your rental car documents. Now let's learn about international driving permit. Go to this website for more information. Okay, so why would you need to carry an IDP? Well, because it is a valid and accepted form of identification in 150 countries worldwide. It contains your name, driver information, your photograph, and it also is translated into 10 different languages. So it will give you a peace of mind when you are driving in other foreign countries. So to apply for this, you need to download and fill out this application form. You need to pay $20 to your local AAA branch office with two original passport pictures and your valid US driver's license. Easy peasy. Okay, what if you're already overseas and you now need an IDP? Well, you can still mail all those information to this address in Heathrow, Florida, but it will take a long time, five to seven weeks for return mails. Okay, there are five FAQs on their website. I'm gonna go through the first two of them. One, are you required to have an IDP in foreign countries? Yes, because even though they might accept your US license, they will still require a translation copy. The IDP provides that, and it's only 20 bucks. will give you a peace of mind. Number two, if you come to the US from a foreign country, do you need an IDP? Yes, it needs to be approved from your country of origin. Okay, so let's look at an example of an IDP. Uh, we're gonna use my example. Um, this IDP I used in Italy and Spain back in 2021 and 2022. Firstly, it contains information about you, the driver, and what kind of vehicles you can drive using this IDP on foreign countries. Usually it's sedans and um, uh, motorcycles. This information is also translated into 10 other languages like Arabic, Russian, Chinese, uh, Portuguese, and these are the list of the 150 countries where IDP is accepted. Translation goes on, Japanese, um, Spanish, no sorry, Italian, German, Spanish, and this is Swedish. Alright, so important notice, IDP is only valid for one year from the date of issue. You must carry your driver's license with you and it must contain your uh, photograph and your signature and here it is me okay so we're gonna go through an example um, this first company is 60 I think that's how it's pronounced I rented a car from them in Italy okay, once in their website put down your pickup and return dates and also the locations if you drop off in a different location than your pickup they will charge you more money okay in this example of a five-day rental I am able to see a lot of options from uh, small hatchbacks to subcompact hatchbacks and crossovers to station wagons and four-seater sedans uh, luxurious cars uh, you have it all so there's a lot of options so this is gonna cost you more money but I highly suggest you get this some sort of protection for your car so that if you unfortunately get a ding or get into an accident you don't have to pay thousands of dollars uh, always choose the minimum protection that way you are covered at least in the most minimum form you can also do a lot of add-ons like additional driver GPS refueling other comfort features uh, like parking assist basically a higher trim car or you know winter tires child seats and importantly if you travel from one country to another country in Europe you probably should get the international coverage that is important for my case though, um, I didn't choose any of the add-ons. Alright, so this 5-day rental of a station wagon which will accommodate up to 5 people, 
uh, in their luggages uh, comes out to be $421.29 or right about 400 euros. It includes unlimited kilometers, uh, third party insurance, minimum protection, and they will hold a 300 euro deposit on your card. This is an actual receipt that I got from 60 when I rented a station wagon that can hold five people uh, from Rome, Fumicino Airport back in 2021. I opted for the uh, unlimited free kilometers and minimum protection in case of uh, accidents and other damages and third party insurance. It was around 372 euros. Now with inflation, it is around 400 euros or a little bit higher. You can go on to other car rental websites like Budget, uh, which is a little cheaper, and Avis and Budget are kind of the same company in Europe. Now comparing a rental from Budget with a rental from 60, as you can see, it is a lot cheaper in Budget. So Budget and Avis are more on the cheaper side, but I haven't had issues with them. They have been great. Okay, so to recap, the four important things that you need to drive safely and legally in Europe valid passport, valid driver's license, valid international driving permit from your country of origin, and your rental car documents like agreements and insurances. And here's some footage of me driving in southern Spain uh, with a rental car that I got from Budget in the town of Cadiz. It was amazing. Southern Spain is freaking beautiful. This clip is uh, in Barcelona. Uh, we're on our way to Montserrat, a mountain with monastery and a lot of good views. This is a very windy road um, to Barcelona. Uh, there were a lot of cyclists there and it was kind of sketchy to uh, ride your bicycles when there's a lot of cars. This is us going towards uh, the town of Nerja, which is also in southern Spain. I mean, the roads are beautiful. I barely saw any potholes compared to roads in, in the US. There's a lot of potholes here, but in, in Europe, the roads were amazing. Okay, another important tip after you get a car uh, from a rental company in anywhere, not just Europe, always take pictures and videos of the car. So in this case, you can see there was a scratch and a lot of dents in this uh, Renault Clio hatchback that we got from Budget. But they mentioned that they had scratches on this car from previous, you know, whatever. And so we were not at fault. They mentioned it, but it is always a good idea to take evidence, like photos and videos. In this case, my, my uncle, uh, he did a great job, that's him. Um, of taking videos around the car and making sure there aren't any damages before we start driving. So I highly recommend that people do this thing anywhere, not just in Europe. Anywhere you get a rental car from, always take a video or pictures before you start the drive. Lastly, please, please, please do not text and drive. It will cost you your life and others. Again, do not text and drive. It is so not worth it. You will get distracted, get into an accident, and this is exactly what will happen. So you don't want that to happen to you, your loved ones, or people around you. So don't text and drive. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was informative and beneficial uh, for your next trip in Europe. So go out there, drive, it's gorgeous.